Tonight, we're going to introduce you to one of the most innovative thinkers of our time. He is a man who has had an enormous impact on our everyday lives. David Kelly is the founder of the Silicon Valley global design firm, IDEO. His company has created thousands of breakthrough inventions, including the first computer mouse from Apple, the stand-up toothpaste tube, and a better Pringle for Procter & Gamble. Audio may be the most influential product design company in the world. Kelly was a longtime friend and colleague of Steve Jobs, and he is a pioneer in something known as design thinking, an innovative approach that incorporates human behavior into design. The big thing about design thinking is it allows people to build on the other the ideas of others. Instead of instead of just having this one thread, you think about it, I come up with an idea and then somebody from somewhere else says, Oh, that makes me think we should do this. And then we could do that. And then you get to a place that you just can't get to in one mind. If you follow David Kelly around IDEO, you can see how he has infused that thinking into the legendary Palo Alto firm he founded more than twenty years ago. Breakthrough ideas happen every day here. The key to unlocking creativity at IDEO may be their unorthodox approach to problem solving. They throw a bunch of people with different backgrounds together in a room. So you're in the business end? Yeah. My background's in software engineering. Journalism. Aerospace engineer. Doctors, opera singers, and anthropologists, for example, and get them to brainstorm. You gotta have a certain culture. You gotta have collaboration. You gotta have diversity. You gotta have an anthropologist and a business person and an engineer and a computer scientist. All of you those kinds it. of. You got it. That's the hard part. Is the cultural thing of having a diverse group of people and having them be good at building on each other's ideas. They encourage wild ideas and visualize solutions by making actual prototypes. But the main tenant is empathy for the consumer, figuring out what humans really want by watching them. If you want to improve a piece of software, all you have to do is watch people using it and see when they grimace and then correlate that to where they are in the software and you can fix that, right? And so the thing is to really build empathy, try to understand people through observing them. In other words, their experience will communicate what you need to focus on. Yep, exactly. It is a concept that had its genesis in 1978 when Kelly and some Stanford pals took the notion of mixing human behavior and design and started the company that would eventually become IDEO. One of their first clients was the owner of a fast-growing personal computer manufacturer by the name of Steve Jobs. Kelly's company helped design dozens of products for Apple, including Apple III and Lisa, and the very first Apple mouse, a descendant of which is still in use today. He said to us, you know, for $17, make, I want you to, he gave us that number, $17, I want you to make a mouse that we're going to use in all of our computers. It's why Steelcase, a company that has been building furniture for 100 years, turned to IDEO to reinvent the classroom chair. This is one of my favorite things. I want you to sit in this oh, chair. Oh, I love this. So really this is for kids, yeah. right? So we well, look, I'm a kid, so yes, there you right, go. You're perfect. <laughs> so when we looked at that old wooden thing with the dog egg yeah, leg yeah, kind of stuff, right. and if you just watch kids and see what they need, what do they need? Well, the main thing they need is a place to put their backpack, yeah. right? So right, you got right. a place to put your backpack. And then they yeah, need it to right there. They're fidgety. They want to move around, yeah. so you put it on wheels, right? Yeah. And they, in getting in and out of it, yeah. you know, you need to just... So yeah. it's, it's not rocket science. It's what? It's empathy. Empathetic. Empathetic. It's empathetic to people. Like, really, like, try to really understand what they really value. Now they're working with clients all over the globe. They're using the same intuitive human point of view to improve access to safe drinking water in India and Africa, redesigning school systems in Peru, and helping North Face expand their brand into China. He was in his 20s, working unhappily as an engineer, when he heard about Stanford University's product design program. What he learned there would transform his life as a design thinker. And so what happened when you came to Stanford? So I get to Stanford, and, um, and uh, it was heaven. Stanford was the synthesis of kind of art and engineering, and it was wonderful. It was shortly after that that Steve Jobs came into the picture. For over 30 years, they worked together and were close friends. Kelly now runs a groundbreaking and wildly popular Hasso Plattner Institute of Design at Stanford, the D School. Okay. 
It is recognized as the first program of its kind dedicated to teaching design thinking as a tool for innovation, not just to designers, but to students from all different disciplines. I think you can follow your noses a little bit around that, like where's the big idea, where's the excitement? Twice as many Stanford grad students want to take classes as are seats available. The lucky 500 students in the program augment their master's degree studies in business, law, medicine, engineering, and the arts by solving problems collaboratively and creatively and immersing themselves in the methodology Kelly's made famous. But there are no degrees. It is something Steve Jobs talked him out of. He said, I don't want somebody with one of your flaky degrees. <laughs> Very stupid, right? <laughs> I don't want them working for me. Yeah, yeah, I don't want them working for me. If they just have your flaky degree. But if they have a computer science degree or a business degree, and then they've come and have our way of thinking on top of that, I'm really excited about it. Today, his cancer is in remission. He spends more time doing the things that he cares about most, including tinkering in his workshop with his 15-year-old daughter. So, Claire, tell me this. What happens here? Everything. <laughs> really everything. Yeah, so Claire and I come here to do projects together. Our big project is, is right over there presently, which is to make a 3D printer. It's called a printer bot. And it's a little machine that makes 3D objects, like a printer that puts ink on a page. Yeah. This makes something three-dimensional.